Massively multiplayer online role-playing games are my favourite genre of games for a variety of reasons. First of all, they're ambitious. These are huge scale productions requiring so much effort from developers in design, story, art, sound and music. They're brimming with complicated systems and features and modes. They usually require huge financial investments and as you can see here, many have used cinematic trailers to try and pull in equally huge audiences. And akin to big movie blockbusters, even when they fail, or you might say especially when they fail, they are very interesting pieces of entertainment to pick apart. Often my favourite MMOs are defined more by their flaws than their successes, so they're fascinating to talk about. MMO games are also, as a result of being massive, multiplayer and online, strongly affected by players and player choice. They're open enough that as a player you can be creative in the way you play and have a unique and personalised experience. And since everyone's experience is varied, it feels especially worth talking about, aka why I'm here right now. But this also means that developers are often surprised by what happens in their own games, and I think this unpredictability is what MMOs are all about. They're more affected by the human aspect than any other genre of games, and it's always exciting to see what people will do in these virtual worlds. Which brings me to my next favourite thing, the worlds. MMOs are an ultimate form of escapism, of glimpsing into a whole other reality. And this connects to role-playing. Every player is equal, and anyone can be anything. It's the ultimate playing dress-ups. There's also the sheer technical impressiveness. MMOs constantly employ the latest in server and computing technologies to power their big online worlds, and that's exciting to think about for any tech head. So, I like MMOs. I think we've covered that. Now, what's interesting is the MMO landscape. We're in a time when MMOs have splintered off in every direction. There's no longer a small handful at the centre of the market, like a decade ago maybe, when everyone pretty much played World of Warcraft or EverQuest or maybe Star Wars Galaxies, but now there are dozens of MMOs maintaining some degree of success. And this bigger picture keeps becoming more and more difficult to grasp because MMOs don't die, they change. They're patched and expanded and updated. Even most of the games that have no official servers anymore are available in some form, such as fan-operated unofficial servers. So in this little video series, I'm going to be diving briefly into a bunch of MMOs which I think are interesting or important or new or inventive. I'll summarise their pasts, their futures, and whether I think they're worth playing in the present. Primarily what I think is noteworthy or unique about them. These won't be in-depth endgame analyses or anything, I'm not a hardcore min-maxer, and there's obviously some games I haven't played much, but hopefully I'll be able to start to make sense of the ever-changing MMO landscape. And my hope is to hear back from others along the way, because I want this to be a discussion. We can learn from all art, and MMOs are no different. Thanks for listening to my voice. Hope to see you around these parts again. Thorimus out.